Um, how are you all doing? So um, we're going to kick off this evening's one with the diversity, um, equality and inclusion presentation first, and then Pat will be joining us at around half eight or so, and we'll um, he'll run you through the role of the PRO for that one. So this is our this is our final session. This is no, uh, day five of our seminars and um, all of these seminars are available and will be available towards the end of next week. That's on... all you carry on. Ooh. Hold on a sec, perfect. <laughs> so all of these um, will be available on the um, Colta's website. On the home page, there's a little um, tab that says Corhramiacht. And under that, you'll have the presentations, you'll have the videos of this and all the policies and procedures and everything that we've talked about is all will be all up there um, towards the end, towards the end of next week. So um, thank you so much for following us through, through the through the series. And um, and if you have any questions, even afterwards, and even any questions that you may have from previous presentations you may have been at, just contact us anytime. Um, any feedback, uh, any comments, um, who would be delighted to get because it's all it's all a learning curve for everybody. So um, getting some of that feedback would be great. So you can email myself, just Magella at cotas.ie or Tomas, Omeldanid at Tomas at cotas.ie um, if you have any questions um, after that. And as we go through this, the, the presentations as well, if you have a question, you can just pop it into the chat. Or if you want to wait till after we do the presentation, we'll have a quick Q&A session after that as well. Um, if you want to ask questions. Now, there's still a couple of people coming in. So bear with me. I'm kind of double jobbing here at the minute. Um, perfect. OK, so we'll get um, started off. So I'll just share my screen here and get. Perfect. And if any, if and if any, everybody could have their mute on, that would be that would be great. Hi. Thanks, Magella. No problem. Okay. Right. So. So equality, diversity, and inclusion. That's the the, the title of this presentation. Uh, and of course, it's um, something that's very much to the fore at the moment um, within any organization, within government, within, within any um, authorities. This is a huge area and an area that needs to be talked about, needs to be discussed. And again, that's why we are developing this training, because there can be um, methods and ways that we do things that could be could be perceived differently. So we just always have to be aware um, of how we interact um, with our members or with our students or anybody who is involved with the organization. Okay, so 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 the Kohramiyat, which are you, you always you've heard about, uh, and that's why this training has, has all been done. Um, so our, our three main points under our Kohramiyat policy is respect, equality, and opportunity. So Kotas Kultori Erin has adopted a policy of Kohramiyat representing these principles of equality, respect and opportunity. This demonstrates a commitment to ensuring that any person, regardless of age, gender, nationality, social economic background, sexual orientation or marital status can participate in Kotas activities without the fear of discrimination or abuse. And this document, again, can be found at cotas.ie. So the Kohramiyat policy itself um, is a guideline on, on where we started in our journey and how we and how we ended up where we are at this moment in time. Um, and it was um, it was all about working on training, all about statistics and, and the gender balances that we have within our organization. And in a few more uh, slides down, I can I'll give you some of the stats um, that we have and to be always you know, mindful of, of those kind of areas whenever you're working on a project or, or doing something within the organization. Now, so our ethos statement. So, <clears throat> so CCE's vision, values, mission, and ethos are guided by many principles. 
So the essence of our movement as we interpret it is that it is all embracing and inclusive of everyone, regardless of race, religion, or ability. All right. Now, okay. Um, the essence, so the core values of our services have always been underpinned by honesty, openness, fairness, uh, the dignity and humanity of each person, free from harassment, anti-sectarian and anti-racist. We believe in the intrinsic value of every person and we aim to further the dignity of all associated with our movement. We want each individual to avail of opportunities for self-expression in the pursuit of Irish traditional music, song, dance and language. We promote inclusivity, equality opportunity for all, regardless of gender, marital status, sexual orientation, age, disability, religious beliefs or lack thereof, race, ethnicity and nationality. So that's that is really important statement from ourselves. And I think this is a statement that should be um, foremost on every unit within COTHIS, every branch, every county board, um, and even as much to say as it's something that should be maybe even printed if you have a small notice board, if you have an area where you where your classes are or anything like that, just to make people aware that this is our ethos. This is our statement, which is really important. Um, and to make sure that all members are aware that this is there um, and that there that the policies are there and that there are procedures and everything like that. So that's really important um, awareness. OK, so the aims. So our aims is to provide an inclusive environment which promotes equality and values diversity. We are committed to eliminating unlawful discrimination of all members <clears throat> and to develop their full potential regardless of gender, marital status, family status, race, religious beliefs, sexual orientation, disability, age, or a member of the traveling community. So again, and that's what this is all about. It's, it's, it's trying to, for every person to reach their, their full ability and to be able to, um, you know, strive to be the musician or the, the arranger or the composer or the teacher that they can be. That's the most important thing for us is to be able to, to do that for a member. So, and the aim is for COTHIS to be truly representative of all sections of society and to our members and employees to feel respected and able to give their best. That's important is that you, you're creating an environment where everybody feels safe and everybody feels that they have a voice um, and that if they feel that they're, that some of their values are not being respected, that they feel that they can come to you to actually to, to, to discuss it with you and try to work something around. So to create in that environment is really important. OK, so what is diversity? So diversity is the awareness and inclusion of a wide variety of different races or cultures within the organization. So COTHIS is a volunteer committee led organization all stages and levels of CCE must implement our EDI policy and have a conscious awareness of its meaning. Committee members are available to all and a duty of care is undertaken. So that's very important. It's, it's also known, which if you were there for Pat's presentation last Tuesday evening on anti-bullying and um, a positive work environment, um, it's all about the third, the, the bystander. The, that's what the, the, the last sentence there is about, is that committee members are available to all and we have a duty of care. So that if we see something happening, if there's something that you're not comfortable with, speak up. Okay, and it's the same, uh, same situation as the, as the bystander. So it, we have, an, as a committee member or even members, um, we have that obligation, you know, to to make sure that everybody feels comfortable and that everybody is respected, which is very, very important. So, and the whole thing, like, and it's all about awareness of what diversity is as well. Um, and that the, the inclusion is really, really important. And when you're looking at different cultures and different races and, and understanding um, 
those cultures as well is part of inclusion and bringing that with you into into your into your unit. OK, so there are a few terms that you may need to know. It's just literally, again, it's within all the concepts of the, that we're dealing with and, and different training sessions and everything that, that these um, have come up. So the first one, so you've got ableism. So ableism is the term for discrimination of disabilities. Then we have affirmative action, obviously, which is the promotion and awareness. So that's what we want to be doing. We want to have affirmative action moving forward. So ageism of, is discrimination of age, classism, discrimination of class, minorities. So understanding minority groups and develop inclusion. Now, a minority group could be, again, a member, a member of the traveling community. A minority group could be somebody who is um, from a different culture, you know, that, that, and that there's a small group in, in that area. So there's lots of different um, um, aspects there. Then we've entro, um, ethnocentrism, which is the discrimination of ethnic beliefs. Then you've got multiculturalism, which is the acceptance of different cultures. Racism, which is privilege and penalty based on one's race and then sexism, which is the discrimination of gender. So they're just literally terms that if you happen to hear them, that you will know what they are. OK, so the difference between stereotypes and biases. So a stereotype, um, excuse me for a second, just letting somebody in. So a stereotype is someone who thinks that most or all members of a certain group are the same. Example, they may see them all as aggressive or they may see them all as lazy. Um, like you could think of maybe an example that there may be like a local biker club, you know, a motorcycle club that's, um, and they might have like um, Hells Angels or something written on their back and they, they have the leathers and they have all of that. But you, you, you could stereotypically think of them as maybe an, a, an aggressive or do you know that we have a perception of what they are so that is what a stereotype is and we have to be very important that we don't label people like that or, or or have those stereotypical views at all so we always have to kind of keep ourselves in check you know when we're thinking about it so th that's what stereotypes stereotypes are so so the, the bias then, so bias is a preference that leads to important judgment. So for example, someone may think that if you must be from the Isle of Ireland to be able to play Irish traditional music correctly. So that's kind of an example of a bias. Um, and I, I've come across this so, so many times that, um, that, that a person and, and I've also another thing that I've come across in my musical career is that some people in certain areas would feel that to be even to play traditional music, you should you should be able to speak Irish as well, that that they're intrinsically connected, that if you haven't got fluent Irish, that you wouldn't have the full meaning of being able to play traditional music. Again, that's a bias. So it is very much a bias. And it's the same that some people, like we have traditional musicians across the world that are uh, amazing um, musicians and, the, and of course are not kind of maybe first or second generation Irish. Um, but again, people's perceptions that you need to be from Ireland to be able to play. Again, it's bringing it back just to give you an example of what a bias can be. And just to, to always, you know, be aware um, and always think, you know, ahead if you can. So it just says there, please be aware of these terms. And when making decisions, be conscious not to fall into the above traps. OK, so always be aware of those, those stereotypical ideas and the biases that may unconsciously come into. And like we, we all have, you know, nobody can put their hand up and say that they are not biased on a hundred percent. There's unconscious bias as well. So it's just keeping ourselves in check, which is the most important thing. Okay, so this is whenever we're talking about conscious and unconscious bias. So the conscious bias occurs when a person is very clear about their feelings and attitudes towards others. 
this can lead to harassment and exclusion. OK, so just what we were talking about before, but the, the views are, are, are very open and the attitudes are very, very open as well. Um, and then the unconscious bias is when our choices and opinions are influenced by past experiences or backgrounds and environmental conditions. This can happen without even realizing it. OK, so that's really important as well. Again, it's, it's always before you make a decision, before you, you know, work on a project, just take the time just to, to put your thought processes together, you know, and and make sure that what you're about to do or what you're about to undertake is coming from the right place, you know, and it, and it's and it has all of this awareness with it as well, which is really important. So it's just it's it's giving your giving yourself time to really think about what you're doing. OK, so altering your own stereotypes. <clears throat> so this, this is some ways on how you can actually do that. So you can seek information to gain awareness and understanding. OK, so if you you know, you've gone through your, pro your, your thought press processes and you realize, oh, God, I, you know, I was thinking this way about that certain group. So what you need to do is make yourself aware of what the group actually does and have an understanding of what um, the group entails as well. Again, going back to the example I had there, say, of the, you know, the, the biker group or anything like that. Like if you and like I know a lot of those those groups would would help out with, you know, blood drives and that they would actually drive, you know, um, blood from one hospital to another free of charge. We all know of people who, who have motorcycles that would do that. So there is an awful lot of um, more information that can be sought about a group. Um, and an understanding of what the group is involved in. So that's really, really important. So if you if you found out, you said, oh, uh, I may need to find a bit, a bit more information about that group before I can cast an opinion. And then spend time looking into your own attitudes and behaviours. So again, it's just tapping into yourself and just being aware, you know, you know do I really think this way about, you know, a, a certain cultural group you know is there is there more that I can maybe find out to have a better viewpoint of it do you know and then so be conscious of the terms and phrases you use and um, if a joke or action amongst people around you try to confront this discrimination openly so again this goes back to what we were talking about our duty of care and the bystander that if you hear jokes and and uh, you know again actions that people close to you about a certain, you know, stereotype, try to come in and say, look, that might not be fair. Do you know, they do this and they do that. So, you know, again, stepping up is always really important as well. And of course, educate yourself in areas of culture other than your own. Um, an open mind, you know, that's always the most important thing. And knowledge, knowledge is power. It really is. No. OK, so changing your personal approach. So we usually make a judgment about someone in less than 30 seconds. So try to use the following steps to improve our awareness of per our personal approach to diversity. OK, so that's really important. It's like what I said before, you know, we're you know, we're very, very quick um, to make a judgment. And it's to catch ourselves before we do that. So the first thing to do is collect information, just like I said before, about the group, about the person, the culture, the, 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 any of those stereotypical types. Uh, collect information on that so that you're fully equipped with all the information. Then divide out the facts from your opinion. So again, always keep your opinions to the side. It's facts that you work with facts and then make judgment based only on facts again you're keeping your opinion to the side be very conscious that it's facts that you're dealing with and then periodically refine your judgment based on facts so always tap in again you know so always go back and again it's always you know 
again looking into to research that little bit more and again gaining more information and tapping back in again periodically always make sure that that opinion that you have in your head doesn't take over again that it is still the facts that you're dealing with and then try to continue to expand your opinion of the person's potential and and like i said at the very beginning that's kind of a, a huge ethos of cultus it's you're developing full potential of of members that we have okay so just going a little bit then into um just equality and gender equality. So gender mainstreaming strategy. Now, this has this was um, developed by the European Institute for Gender Equality um, um, a few years ago. And their their plan, again, was to make sure that um, in all works of life, not just the arts, but all works uh, walks of life, the, the gender mainstreaming is very equal. Um, and that women and men are treated exactly the same. So just the definition there of that gender mainstreaming strategy. So gender mainstreaming has been embraced internationally as a strategy towards realizing gender equality. It involves the, um, the integration of gender and, um, sorry, the integration of a gender perspective into the preparation, design, implementation, monitoring and evaluation of policies regulatory measures and spending programs with a view to promoting equality between women and men and combating discrimination. So that's that's just something to be aware of that is happening internationally, that these strategies and all of this is being worked on. And I have a slide later on that shows a lot of different resources um, that would show you if you want to look into the, the avenue a little bit more. Um, but I, as I said there at the bottom, the EIGE have done a huge amount of work um, with this. And um, again, they're rolling out training as well all the time. So it's just something to be aware of that, and that is happening. Now, just a few statistics, again, going back to the, the gender equality side of things. Now, all of this, this all started through, I'm sure you, know, you remember, um, there's a group called Fair Play. Um, and it was the it was the first time that a, a group of, of, of traditional music musicians and singers and dancers um, and women who um, it was more on a professional basis that um, that the the amount of in the performance world, it was very heavily weighted for males rather than females. So the, this um, group of musicians came together to try and equal the balance as much as possible. So when this all started, this is how we began our Kuharamiak journey. And we looked into our own organization and we looked at the statistics ourselves with what we have in Kothis. So when we look at staff, okay, so staff that's in head office, the regional management centers and senior administration staff. So all the staff across Kothis, which is fantastic. We have 50% male in head office, which includes management, of course, and 50% female. So male and female, 50%. Then in the regional staff, we have actually 60% female and 40% male. Now, when we look at... Now, so this is the R Corla. So the, uh, um, so the Central Executive Committee. So obviously with key leadership positions and national officers, including advisory subcommittees and chairs. So this is the, the R Corla and subcommittees divided down. So we have 43% female and we have 57% male again, which is great. And all of this, all of this was not planned. All of this has happened organically throughout the organization, which is fantastic. And then looking at the Cultus TTCT. Now the TTCT is the teaching diploma that we do every, it actually starts its next week, um, which is starting up in the Culturlin. And it's a teaching diploma for a week. Um, and we have 63% female that have taken the TTCT and 37% male that have taken the TTCT. So that's quite, quite interesting that it's very heavily weighted on the female side. Um, um, for the for the teaching diploma. 
then when we look at our SCT, so our SCT is our practical music examinations that happen every year. So when you look at the examiners, so um, 55% are female and 43% are male. But what's really interesting is the actual candidates themselves, 73% are female and 27% are male. So it's um, very interesting to see that, that the majority of people who are taking exams um, would be would be female students. Now, OK, so just some key principles of best practice. So there are three stages. So you've got planning, you've got implementation and you've got evaluation. So this is to do with all of EDI, which is equality, diversity, inclusion, um, um, which is really important. So we'll start off with the planning phase. So recognize the importance of affording equal opportunity and fair treatment to all present and potential members. Then ensure that all people, irrespective of their age, gender, ability, disability, race, religion, ethnic origin, creed, color, nationality, social status or social orientation, have a genuine and equal opportunity to participate in activities at all levels and at all roles. It's very, very important. And then not to disadvantage any individual by imposing any conditions or requirements with which cannot be justified. OK, so that's really important. So whenever you're sitting down to plan for your year's activities, you know, you may do this at an AGM or you may do this um, at another meeting or sitting around or having a chat. So yeah, you do work on a planning stage first and be very aware of all of these issues in the background when you're actually planning it, do you know? Um, and I think that's the, the, and that's the key thing. Awareness is, awareness is empowerment, do you know? Knowledge is empowerment. And, um, and to be able to, to, to note that and just to, to make sure that as you move forward with, with any of your activities, that you don't have any biases there, like we talked about before, and all of those stereotypes are gone and always, you know, check in with yourself as well. So the planning stage is very, very important. And even as you go through the planning, you could, you know, if you have other other cultures that are in, um, in your branch, you know, maybe ask them to bring something of their culture into into something that you do do you know within an activity again and that includes them on a different level as well so again it's all about knowing and um and researching um as well okay so the second step of course then is your implementation okay so you're identifying inequalities and gaps OK, so again, when you've got your planning stage done, then when you start to implement it, you may see other things that are happening. But again, it's keeping the open mind and being aware that there that this may happen. And then you define your objectives. What results do you want out of what you're planning? Um, then take into account gender and diversity when developing activities, policies, committees and programs. So to always be conscious of that. Then you identify resources available. You, the parties involved must play an active role. You're, the knowledge, of course, education knowledge is really, really important. Practical skills, you know, how to bring and include these different, you know, areas into, into your branch. Change in attitude and behavior. I think that's a very that's a very important one. Um, and again, it's all like I said before, it's that tapping into ourselves um, and to, to try to be more inclusive. Good organizational management and how to bring about expected results. So it's all as well as, you know, you do um, make sure that what you are planning and what you're trying to implement is achievable as well, you know, so, and again, how you bring about those results and how, uh, and how to expect those results, which is, is important too. Okay, so then the third step then is the evaluation. 
So you monitor progress. OK, so always be monitoring along the way how things are going. So evaluate activities and programs from a gender and diversity perspective. OK, that's just, again, evaluated as you go along. You've, you, you've planned it, you've implemented it. So you go back and make sure that it's still happening. Availability and knowledge of resources. Again, always arm yourself with, a, with as much information as you possibly can. Aim for high standards. Quality assurance. Again, quality assurance is very much based on the same thing of evalu again of evaluating and um, and making sure that the implementation and planning is is going according to plan. Then you've got tailored training to the needs of individual or groups. Then encouragement and policy commitment. So policy commitment is very huge. And again, um, all our policies and procedures are on the CULTIS website, on that homepage under the Cohermic tab. So arm yourself to know the policies. Um, so that again, the knowledge there um, is key and is power as well. So that's, that's important. Okay. So, so some educational resources, excuse me. So you can do some of this yourself in your branches. If you're a county board, it may be something that you would like to do as well to, you know, introduce training. And like even what we're doing here from a national level, this should, this all needs to permeate down, right down to the ground, to the, to the branches. So it would be, it would be an idea, you know, to, for maybe the provincial councils to take on an element, maybe some county boards would like to do something and branches themselves, you know, could certainly get involved. And, and again, if any help is needed or required, you know, you can contact us at any stage. So first off, so you've got your face-to-face -face training, which hasn't really happened a lot, obviously, for over the past while and because of COVID. Um, and of course, this setup is very, very handy as well um to to do it over zoom which is which, which is which is great and then you've got courses of study now there are um in the in the department in the in the department the culture department we there are two modules being rolled out at the moment and one is on the unconscious bias and the other one is on anti-bullying and harassment uh, harassment within the arts so um, if you go online, it's actually there's a slide on it later on. And I'll show you. All you have to do is to click into it. Um, but there is training there available for free of charge for every member and anybody who who works or within the, the, the arts. It's a really, really vital resource to have. So it is. It's really good. And that kind of ties in again to the online modules um, that are available. And then there's guidance materials. Um, I again, I have a list of resources of all of those at the end of the slide. These slides. Then you have a network of sharing expertise. So, talk to different branches, talk to county boards, talk to, you know, um, even different organisations within the community and how they work with diversity. And and is there something that they could you could share? Do you know, is there any community more community involvement that can be used? um on on that guidance as well and then you've got uh workshops of course then you've got the seminars like we're doing here you've got mentoring as well you've got mentoring roles too or you could have somebody coming in just to help out um maybe just to sit down with with a committee or to sit down with key figures within a branch um, to give them ideas and help them through so that they'd be a mentor to, you know, to, to develop their ideas and to bring them back into the branch. Then you have promotion of equal opportunities, of course, and then continuous development of documentation. So always be refreshing yourselves all the time with whatever new information is out there and always be, be looking out for um, the different training sessions. And there's lots of stuff online and that's available there. No. OK, so this is what I was talking about, the additional training there that's available from the department. So you have two courses available and um, each of which they take about an hour each. 
So they are addressing the unconscious bias and they're tackling bullying and harassment at work. And that is the link. So whenever this, this is going to be put up on the website, all you have to do is go into these slides and you'll be able to click on the link there and it'll bring you straight to those courses to be able to do. And this training um, is available free of charge and it's promoted, excuse me, it's promoted by the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Great Thoughts, Sport and Media for Arts, Culture and Creative Sector. So um, that is a fantastic resource that is there as well. So these are just the legal resources. I won't bore you too much going through them, but they're again, you, you'll be able to see them on the slides. But there there's a lot of work going on out there with regards to especially equality and um, again, diversity inclusion. There is a lot of work. And even if you notice down here at the very end, we have the bystander intervention program that UCC are working on. And that's very, very interesting work that's happening there because the role of the bystander is getting you know, more and more important as things um, are moving forward. So th the work that they do there is fantastic. And again, you've got um, like even on gov.ie, you've got there's a lot of gender equality happening there as well. And then the Department of Children, Equality and Disability have a lot of information as well, if there's anything that you're looking for, especially with regards to, you know, disability um, and that you, you and again, child protection, all of that, all of that is available there. OK, so just talking a little bit about disability awareness. So one of the biggest barriers for people with disabilities is actually other people. Um, so disability is no longer just the knowledge that discrimination is wrong. When considering disability awareness, it is important to remember that someone with a disability is just the same as others. So again, it's going back to our perceptions. It's going back to the, you know, the stereotypes, all of that kind of stuff. You have to, to just to, to rethink. So when you're with somebody, so people with a disability want the same things as everybody. So just a couple of do's and don'ts so that they want to be treated as individuals. They want to be challenged. They want to be accepted and included and they want to exceed. So they want exactly the same thing as everybody else. And that is, again, what we need to be very conscious of. Now, so just a couple of do's and don'ts. Now, this information has come from the Disability Association in Ireland. And again, they have a lot of good online modules to, to work on too, especially I find as a teacher, they give you good kind of models and kind of ideas, you know, if you may have somebody in a class that has a, a specific disability. So people with a disability want to be treated as individuals. They want to be challenged, accepted and included. So some do's and don'ts. So do not speak, uh, do speak directly to me. Um, again, and I, I have seen this in the past too, that sometimes that whenever the person who is, you know, pushing the wheelchair may come across somebody who is coming to talk to them, but would talk to the person who is pushing the wheelchair and not the person with the disability. So again, it's to speak directly to them. So do respect my personal space. Do include me in conversations. So that same type of what which I just just mentioned that you know if you're going over to speak to somebody that you talk to to both. Um, do think before you speak. Don't make assumptions, don't patronize me, and don't tap me or touch me. So it's interesting to hear those, that this obviously is happening to people with disabilities. And to hear this coming from the Disability Association is, is interesting to know. And again, for ourselves to be aware of that we don't do this, or we do. Okay, so, so the way forward with regards to all, all of these issues is education, which we're doing at the moment, it's educating yourself, training, which we're doing, and there's a lot more available out there. Awareness, empowerment. These are words that I've been using a lot, and I think they're really, really important. Awareness and empowerment. Research, development, precedent. Go back and see if there, there, there have there been different projects and how they worked. How can you bring them into your own branch and safeguarding? So there, if you have all of those and that you're 
whenever you're planning for whatever activities that you think of those issues and how to move forward. If you're thinking of those, you're on the right track. Okay, so just, just within our current structures at the moment and how we're integrating EDI policy. Sorry, I think somebody just put their mic on there. Hi. Um, uh, happy birthday. I said happy birthday. Happy birthday, enjoy your birthday. Yeah. Um, I can't find the person who has their mic on. Oh, I think we're okay again. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Okay, so um, yes, yeah, so our current structures, what we have and how we're implementing the, these new policies, we're, we're kind of weaving them in through all the different aspects of of uh, within coaches structures. So on the TTCT, uh, which is the, again, which we talked about before is the teacher's uh, training course. Um, we have um, a, a, a lecture dedicated to, to these issues. On the SCT, we work with examiners during their training days, again, working on these aspects. We have a pre-TTC preparatory course, again, which has a lecture on these issues. We have adjudicators for County Provincial All-Ireland Flana, which have to, um, they undergo seminars and mentoring and again, developing all these ideas. Event organizers, we've got artists and performances across all levels of the organization. Um, again, all this information is available to them. Child and vulnerable adult protection and safeguarding training. So even part of the child protection training, we've implemented this EDI policy as well. So there's, again, through the officer and leadership training, which we have been doing, youth officer training, volunteer training, and PR seminars and training as well. So there's a lot of work happening um, with regards to these areas. So, okay, so just to conclude, so things just to, again, be aware of. So be aware of all our policies and procedures. Um, if you are, if you have, know the policy and procedures, you're well armed. And, um, and again, that knowledge is power. If you have, if you hear or observe something questionable, speak up. Understand the needs of each ethnic, cultural or disability group. Create an atmosphere where protected group members feel comfortable. And I think that just says it all. That's exactly what we are trying to achieve within our organization. So that is my presentation.